Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you, you all hearts are open, open all, all desires known, and, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. O oh Lord, we pray that your grace may always proceed and follow after us, that we may continually be given to good works through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of God's word. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 4, beginning with the first verse. And now, O Israel, listen to the statutes and the rules that I am teaching you, and do them, that you may live and go in and take possession of the land that the Lord, the God your, of your fathers, is giving you. You shall not add to the word that I command you, nor take from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did at Baal Peor. For the Lord your God destroyed from among you all the men who followed the Baal of Peor. But you who held fast to the Lord your God are all alive today. See, I have taught you statutes and rules as the Lord my God commanded me that you should do them in the land that you are entering to take possession of it. Keep them and do them for that will be your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the peoples, who, when they hear all these statutes, will say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what great nation is there that has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is to us, whenever we call upon him? And what great nation is there that has statutes and rules so righteous as all this law that I set before you today. Only take care and keep your soul diligently, lest you forget the things that your eyes have seen 
and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the book of Psalms, chapter 15, beginning with the first verse. Please read responsibly by whole verse. O Lord, who shall sojourn in your tent? Who shall dwell on your holy hill? He who walks blamelessly, and does, does what, what is right, and, and speaks, speaks truth in his heart. Who does not slander with his tongue, and does no evil to his neighbor, nor takes <laughs> up a reproach against his friend? In whose eyes a vile person is despised, but who honors those who fear the Lord, who swears to his own hurt, and does not change? Who does not put his money at interest, and does not take a bribe against the innocent. He who does these things shall never be moved. A reading from the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, beginning with the 10th verse. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strengths of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers and against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand firm. Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints and also for me, that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Kids who are heading to children's worship, come on up here so we can pray for you, please. Come on. I can tell you two to hurry up because, you know. <laughs> Good boy. They will not break out of their liturgical pace. <laughs> Way to go, girls. Well, let's pray for our kids. O oh, gracious God, our Heavenly Father, keep watch over our children in this unsteady and confusing world. Mercifully care for them and teach them that your ways give abundant life. And give them strength to stand firm by Christ Jesus our Lord, so that they might never know a day apart from you, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We'll see you in a little while. I hear the Savior say, Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Lord, now. Bye. 
May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated if you would. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. This morning, Jesus tells his listeners, us included, in essence, to stop obsessing about bad things or people or situations out there and to understand that evil comes from within the human heart. And that's a tough pill. It's so much easier, so much more satisfying to have an enemy whether another human being or a particular system or another religion or whatever, 
We all love a scapegoat. It makes life simpler if sin and evil and everything that's wrong with the world is outside of us, doesn't it? It just makes things simpler. But that assumption in itself, that bad stuff is really all just out there and never in here, that assumption is a particularly dark kind of sin. Years and years ago, in the early 20th century, a popular London newspaper invited submissions from readers of all stripes to answer the question, what's wrong with the world today? They just put it out there. You can imagine there were a lot of submissions in answer to the question, what's wrong with the world today? But it was that towering genius of Christianity, G.K. Chesterton, who sent in his reply, and it read this way, Dear Sir, I am. <laughs> he understood that evil comes from within the human heart and saw and knew the presence of sin in his own life. And we struggle to live in that kind of Christian maturity, don't we? There's nothing easy about openness and honesty before God and people concerning our own brokenness. But that's the call of following Jesus. At the beginning of Mark's gospel, he says, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. Not once, by the way. Repent with your whole life. Believe the good news with everything you've got. And I've got at least one idea about why we struggle so hard with this, why it's difficult for us to focus solely on our own sin and brokenness rather than what we perceive as being wrong with everyone else. I've got one idea about this, and I think it has to do with the way we think about sin. That's right, we're going to talk a little bit about sin this morning. Go ahead and take a deep breath because I promise there's good news, all right? Hold me to that, by the way. I've said that before. Uh, if there's not good news in a sermon, um, that it's time for you guys to kind of kick me out of here, okay? Uh, but I promise there's good news this morning. But we've got to talk about sin first, specifically how we tend to think about it. You see, Christians, uh, especially in the Western world, we tend to think of sin exclusively as the willful transgression of God's law, right? Strictly in legal terms, so that we think of it pretty much only as the transgression of God's law. Well, that certainly fits the bill for sin, yes? But the legal image, the legal understanding of sin is not the be-all, end-all for how we conceive of sin operating in our lives and in the world around us. And if the legal thing is the only way we think about sin, it can have devastating consequences for each of us. So first, to get into this, let me ask you a question. Remember, you're in church, so be honest. Have you ever broken the law? Ever? Willfully or unwillfully? Have you ever jaywalked? Ever made an illegal U-turn? Have you ever exceeded the speed limit, right? Maybe right out here on King's Highway, just maybe. Now, once you realize that you're jaywalking or that you're driving too fast, do you then go straight to the police station and turn your officer? I was going 47 in a 45 I'm here to turn myself in. Is that your reaction? No. You do this number. You look around. Make sure no cops are around. Make sure no one saw you. So too, if our only concept of sin in the Christian life is breaking the law, then what happens when we recognize the presence of pride? or anger, or greed in our own hearts, right? Your heart does this number. And then you remember that God sees everything, which can end up compounding the problem. We can become trapped in a sense of separation from God, feeling like no amount of I'm sorry's can ever make up for whatever the sin is we've discovered in ourselves. And we end up in this weird place of almost being afraid to get too close again to the presence of a holy God. 
Now let me ask you another question. If you're sick, say in the middle of flu season, like in wintertime, if you're sick, do you intentionally stay away from a pharmacy or from medical care? Reasonably, no, of course not. You walk into the doctor's office, you get taken to the room, you sit there and wait and wait and wait until the doctor shows up, and then you say, here's what's wrong, I'm sick, please help me. And then you get examined and diagnosed, and there's medicine prescribed, and you take the medicine and you begin to heal. Now what if you get sick again, say three months down the road? Do you stay away from the doctor because, oh, he saw me three months ago, he doesn't want to have to bother with me again? No, you go back, right? You get examined again, you get diagnosed again, maybe for something different this time. And then you receive treatment, whether it's medicine or physical therapy or whatever, and you begin to heal. Do you see how different the posture of our heart and mind is in that scenario as opposed to when we catch ourselves speeding on the highway? What I'm telling you is this. As much as the legal concept of sin, we know what I mean by that, right? Like we are accounted righteous because of Christ's atoning sacrifice on the cross, right? Right? As much as that legal understanding of sin is part of the Christian tradition, so too is the radically more holistic understanding of sin as a condition, a sickness of soul that every member of the human race suffers from. It's there. It's in the Bible. In chapter 2 of Mark's gospel, Jesus says plainly, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. He equates sin with sickness. And this is terribly important for us to grasp, especially in terms of ongoing growth in grace. Because if sin is only exclusively a legal matter between me and God, and, the gospel, and if the gospel is also true, namely that Jesus paid it all, which he did, but if it's only a legal thing and Jesus has paid it all, then my heart, my mind, my life can jaywalk with impunity, right? Nothing matters. But... If sin is also a matter of spiritual disease or sickness from which we all need to heal and recover for our entire lives, well, that sheds new light on everything. And here's why. As far as the legal understanding of sin is concerned, we are talking always about a finished, settled case. I said that loudly because I don't want you to miss the gospel moment here. As far as our relationship to God because of Christ, that case is settled. It cannot be appealed, right, and reopened. I'll say it to you again in a few moments the way I say it every Sunday morning. Jesus Christ is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Our Lord, with his dying breaths, did not say It is now a possibility. He said it is finished. In his death and resurrection, Jesus Christ has died and atoned for every sin ever committed by the human race. Past, present, and future. Hallelujah. Where are my Baptists? Amen? Thank you for that. So just because we've got sin in our lives then, that doesn't mean we've somehow gotten out from under the finished work of Jesus' cross and that we're now in danger of him kicking us out or forsaking us. No. The presence of sin in my life, in your life, it's a matter of a soul that's sick and needs the ongoing healing mercy and grace of God. Do you hear the difference between those two ways of looking at sin, right? You can't do a thing to reverse the fact that Jesus has secured your forgiveness by his cross and resurrection. Can't change it. It's done. And a life of transformation, of healing, wholeness, beginning with baptism and moving 
further and further into the very heart of God for eternity is always on offer for me, for you, for everyone. Just good news. I told you there'd be good news. It's grace and good news all the way down. Now, of course, we have a part to play in this, right? Let's go back to talking about being sick. If you're sick, uh, you don't have to go to the doctor. You can ignore a minor sickness long enough that it gets so bad you have to be hospitalized. It's the same thing, spiritually speaking. We can't ignore it, but why would we? That's the question. Why would you? You know, I said earlier that Jesus' words this morning were a tough pill to swallow. Him talking about evil coming from my own heart, right? Well, those words are especially difficult if we think that admitting and discovering evil thoughts and all manner of sin in our own hearts means that we're beyond hope or that we ever need to hide from God. But when we understand Jesus' words this morning, when we understand all of Jesus' words as those of the great physician, diagnosing each of us from the deep well of divine compassion, well, then there's nothing to be afraid of. Nothing. And then his words, Jesus' words, his gospel, his sacraments, the life of prayer, serving one another, these things become the remedy to what ails each and every one of us. Our status before God is settled because of the cross. Our status is settled. We just need to heal. We need mercy, not once, all the time. We need mercy. The Greek word uh, for mercy in the New Testament, eleison, that comes from the same root as the word in Greek for olive oil, believe it or not. You want to know why? Because in the ancient world, oil was used as a medicinal healing salve and tonic for all kinds of sicknesses. That's God's mercy, healing for sick souls. And there is no limit to the healing and restoring mercy of God. It's true that it's no fun being sick. We all know that moment when we can feel a cold coming on, but we spend a little bit of time denying it. Do you do that too? Maybe, you know. I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm not really sick. And then you just put off dealing with it. And that never helps, right? It just doesn't. It's the same with our own brokenness, with our own spiritual sickness of sin. We'd probably rather keep saying, I'm fine, look at what this person or these people are doing. I'm not that sick, I'm not that bad. Don't pretend that you don't have any sin. But don't be afraid to take it to the Lord either. Immediately when you discover it, every single time, go for some healing. Because his judgment, his judgment on me, on you, has come down already over 2,000 years ago on his own sacred Your sentence before God is eternal, free on account of Christ. And right now, in the hearing of the gospel, receiving his life from the holy table, this same Jesus offers healing mercy for each and every one of us, mind, body, and soul. So don't be afraid. Don't ever shy away from God for shame. Come boldly this morning before the throne of grace. Receive healing, body and soul, unto everlasting life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Stand together. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. 
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world, saying, hear our prayer. For the peace of the whole world and for the well-being and unity of the people of God, Lord, in your mercy, For Foley, our Archbishop, and Mark, our Bishop, for the election of our next Bishop, and for all the clergy and people of our diocese and congregation, Lord, in your mercy, for all those who proclaim the gospel at home and abroad, and for all who teach and disciple others, Lord, in your mercy, for our brothers and sisters in Christ who are persecuted for their faith. Lord, in your mercy, for our nation, for those in authority, and for all in public service, especially our president, our governor, and our mayor. Lord, in your mercy, for all those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Lord, in your mercy, for all those who have departed this life in the certain hope of the resurrection, in thanksgiving let us pray, Lord, in your mercy, let us pray for our own needs and those of others. You are invited to add your prayers either silently or aloud. Afghanistan, the lost Marines. Father, we ask you for great repose for souls and your servants in the midst of this war. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. 
Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance. And Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Let's stand together. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's greet one another. Please be seated if you would. Good morning, everyone. I'm Chance. I'm the pastor of this here church. Welcome, one and all, everybody in the room, everyone joining us uh, via the internet. Welcome. Yes, welcome to you too, sir. There's a lot of stuff going on, announcements here on page four. In your bulletin, uh, we'll begin. Choir is back today in the 11 o'clock service. Uh, music programs are all back in full swing. I brought our girls uh, this past Monday for choir and uh, dropped them off and went back over here, back to my study, and I had to walk out for something, and I realized already on day one, Ashley had the kids processing down these stairs with their hymnals, already singing O Come, O Come, Emmanuel beautifully. And I was like, man, I'm already ready for Advent, and we still got all this time to go. Uh, I think there's 20 kids in choir this season already. Choir is back at 11. And so to celebrate the startup of fall, the return of the choir, Ashley has put on, if you didn't see it, quite a spread out there in Gravelly Hall, including some of the more highfalutin Rice Krispies that I have ever seen. I believe there is a pretzel and date Rice Krispie out there for your enjoyment. So I commend that to you. Be sure and thank Ashley uh, when you see her uh, for the countless ways that she serves this community and this church. Uh, the next thing that I want to bring up is uh, your Connect card, which is in here. Don't forget about that. Fill that out. Let us know you're here, uh, especially if you have prayer requests, things you'd like me to be praying about. And you can drop that in the plate when you head up later. You can also use your Connect card to RSVP for our fall teaching series, Essentials, the Basics of Christian Faith, which begins this coming Wednesday night in this room at 5.30 p.m. Everyone's invited. I think it's going to be a great time. We'll have uh, time to pray together. Uh, I'll do a time of teaching, and then there'll be time as well for question and answer. You'll have me kind of on the spot, and you can just ask whatever. Related to the material, right? We can do favorite movies some other time, obviously, but... Uh, so make plans to attend, and if you can RSVP, please do. That just helps us know how many of the booklets to print and what not. Uh, there is another announcement, right? Um, let me see if I got this right. Yes, Coastal School Ministries. Uh, do you all know this group? They, uh, am, am I right? Yeah, Coastal School Ministries. It's essentially... A nonprofit organization where kids from the high school can choose to take an elective in Bible, but they can't do it on campus. And we are uniquely blessed to be able to host them during the week. Um, so they do four shifts most days in and out of our church during the week. Um, it's a total of about 50 high schoolers. And so Jane, uh, on behalf of the outreach committee, is planning a little bit of a kind of welcoming committee for them. We're going to do cookies and snacks and whatnot on Wednesday the 8th, correct? Is that right? Okay. Uh, if, you, if you can help out, if you're interested in helping out, you can reach out to Jane, and there'll be more information about this forthcoming, but I wanted to go ahead and make the announcement this morning. And I think, by way of announcements, that's it. Finally, a word about Holy Communion. All baptized Christians are welcome to receive communion here at Trinity Church. Uh, if you won't be receiving communion, come on up anyway. Just cross your arms over your chest like this, and that's my signal to pray a blessing over you instead. Now, walk in love 
as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, our holy heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, our duty and our joy always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all, that by his suffering and death we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. For on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. And we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also, that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us with all your saints into the joy of your heavenly kingdom where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed once for all upon the cross. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. We do not presume to come to this, your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb.
precious love is this, oh my soul, oh my soul, what wondrous love is this, oh my soul, what wondrous love is this, that calls the Lord of bliss to lay aside his crown for my soul. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, 
we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food for the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks.